Hey guys, what's up? Absolutely Beast. So today, uh, I kind of want to talk about um, something that I've seen a little bit of debate about, uh, and that would be a Forza 7 versus a Gran Turismo Sport. Um, I've had a, a comment or a few comments about it too, just talking about just the games in general, and um, so I just went and watched uh, from Digital Foundry, who I really like. Um, I watched their full analysis of Gran Turismo Sport. Now, to be fair, Gran Turismo Sport is in beta form. Um, I don't believe it's out yet. Um, but I also watched some videos uh, yesterday from a guy who put up some videos, of some full-length videos, like 10, 15 minutes, 10, 12, 14 minutes each, of two different races that he did. And uh, so that's what kind of got me started on this. And then uh, I watched the Digital Foundry video where they did an uh, in-depth tech analysis, comparing it with the previous uh, Gran Turismo games. Um, and then I went back and re-watched um, Forza 7, uh, both videos that Digital Foundry has, both just the nine minutes of raw gameplay uh, with just the Porsche and the uh, GTR, GDR. Actually, uh, both, I got to see the full race. I got to see the full race with the Porsche and the GTR. Which is really cool. So, um, a few things. So, you know, first of all, um, the last game Gran Turismo released was in 2013, and it was on the PlayStation 3. So, if you want to think back that far, uh, the game that launched in 2013 was Forza 5, Forza Motorsport 5. But not only do they have Forza Motorsport 5 at the same time as Forza, or Forza, as uh, Gran Turismo 6, which was their previous installment. Um, that was on last generation on the PS3, and that was launched in 2013. So Forza 5, Motorsport 5, was launched on the Xbox One in 2013. And then two years later, they launched Forza Motorsport 6, also on the Xbox One. And now we're coming to Forza Motorsport 7. So Forza has actually released two games in the time that Gran Turismo has released one game. Um, and... From a, from a, from my personal opinion, uh, just, I mean, like I said, from tech analysis that I watched, but mainly just even from raw gameplay, um, I don't really think Forza and Gran Turismo are even in the same, you know, ballpark. I mean, Gran Turismo looks pretty good, and they were, you know, comparing how it's definitely a large upgrade over the previous one, but I mean, when you're talking about a game like that, um, and they, they were making a big deal out of the fact that the game renders at, at a full... 1980 by 10 or uh, 1920 by 1080 because the apparently the previous Gran Turismo Gran Turismo 6 only rendered at like 1440 by 1080 which is really weird that's that's a really weird resolution and um yeah so the, the tech analysis was saying that but like I said to be fair it's, it is a beta um, but also to be fair we haven't really seen anything from you know Forza 7 yet because that's not out yet either so I feel like it's directly comparable in that sense but I mean, as far as performance, um, you know, they were able to stay around 60 frames per second in Gran Turismo, um, and his quote was, as long as, and I was trying to record here, there was something going on with my recording thing, uh, which is also why I started recording 14 seconds into the race, so uh, sorry about that, little break, and you can probably tell my mic's pretty staticky right there, but, uh, so they made the comment, his quote was, as long as you're not, like he said at the beginning of the race, frame rate, suffers a heavy penalty and they see the frame rate dip into the low 50s and even the high 40s uh, at the beginning of the race when there's more cars on the screen and it's just you know to think about that to think about you know a quote next generation game like Gran Turismo 6 or a uh, sport sorry Gran Turismo Sport um, now I saw a commercial the other day for it earlier today uh, that was uh, actually a really good commercial made, kind of made my heart pound a little bit and I was thinking like dude that looks awesome uh, just the way they were marketing it, but, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, same thing there. So, I mean, they, the way they were marketing it, it, it seemed really good, but, uh, to be honest, um, after watching the tech analysis and just the raw footage of that game, it just, it doesn't, I don't think it's on the same level as Forza Motorsport 7. I really don't. Um, you know, to think that this company has had since, you know, because their game finished in 2013, so to think that they've had... You know, they'll have four years by the time this game launches to have worked on it, and they're not even going to produce a product as good as what Forza Motorsport produced in just two years. Um, kind of telling to me. Um, and, you know, Forza, as uh, the lead guy at um, 
Digital Foundry says, you know, the hallmark of Forza, Forza Motorsport is the locked 60 frames per second. I mean, it almost never dips below that. In fact, the only time they said they've ever been able to get it to dip below that was right at the start of a race with a full 24 cars when it's raining. And only on certain tracks, they were able to experience a little bit of slowdown, a couple of frames. Uh, but to say that, you know, Gran Turismo is dropping frames at the beginning of the race, up down into low 50s or high 40s, I mean, that is just... You know, can you can you imagine trying to race at a high level with you know only getting in the 40s, especially right at the beginning when there's all these cars? So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not to trash on Gran Turismo, that's for sure. I, I've never, I, I haven't played since like Gran Turismo 2. You know, whichever one had the white cover, I think that's which one it was. But I just think it's crazy, you know, to uh, to try to really compare those two. I don't feel like they're in the same field. It's almost like comparing a Call of Duty on a Battlefield, you know. It's not saying Battlefield is bad, or that it doesn't have its place, or that it's not extremely successful, but to try to compare it to a Call of Duty, I mean, Battlefield had their best year ever, and they sold, like, what, 15 million copies at most? And Call of Duty, in their worst few years recently, have had a t string of terrible years where they've only sold about 20 million copies. So, only 20 million. So it's kind of like saying, you know, they're not directly... I mean, they are comparable, but, you know, they're not really on the same level. Um, and I feel like that's the case with uh, Gran Turismo Sport. You know, it... It just it's something that I, I I don't know. I mean, just the impression that I get from watching it, it just it almost, in my opinion, not even lying, it almost seems worse than Forza Six, in my opinion. Um, it's just I don't know. And, and and the other thing too is it has the same sort of thing that Project Cars has, um, which is a very strange. Oh, that was great, huh? It has a, the same thing that Forza, um, uh, not Forza Six. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just has this really weird, like, same thing as Project Cars has, it has this very strange, like, violence to the car, um, where when you take a turn, it, it, it really, like, the inside tires really rock hard, like, the car really rocks back and forth, it looks very fake, um, I'm not quite sure what it is, um, but Forza has a much smoother implementation as you come into the corners, as you come out, I mean, as you watch this car, as I'm taking the corner, you know, look at that back right tire as I'm turning to the, to that side, I mean, it's not... And then same here as I come into this one, like, look at that going left, look at that back left tire, like, that's relatively smooth. Um, in these other games, that inside tire is lifting off the ground multiple times in this sort of rocking, like, jerking motion, and it's very, very off-putting. Um, and that's what was really messing me up about Project Cars, I was racing it the other day. If you guys haven't seen that video, that's a cool video. Um, it's me driving an Audi R8 V10. Um, on Project Cars, I just, just a couple weeks ago I put it up. And uh, it's me racing on Laguna Seca, and, and you can you can kind of see what I'm talking about if you go and watch that. It's just really like really violent, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. So um, that being said, uh, that, that's kind of my take on it as compared to, to um, you know to Gran Turismo. Um, now, as far as the Forza Motorsport 7 stuff itself, uh, first of all, I just want to say you know for those of you who are not going to play on 4K, for those of you who are not getting the Xbox One X, um, if you have the Xbox One S. Uh, it does support HDR, so you'll at least get the benefits of the HDR, which, as I've heard people say, is, makes more, makes almost m as much of it. Well, let's just say as much of a difference as 4K, um, which is fun. So you'll you'll see that. And plus, uh, they've also said that when you when you get it, even on the Xbox One, even if it's the original Xbox One, you're going to see the best-looking Forza game they've ever made. And so, really, the only difference on the one uh, X will be the 4K, which is what I'm referring to when I talk about how crazy it's going to be to like knock you out of your seat. So, like, here's an example, okay? If you're looking at this car I'm driving right now, look between the rear tires, you can see that radiator there in the back. As you see the lighting shift as I go through corners and go through this, you can see... Oh, I'm such an idiot. Wow. That's good timing, self. So. Anyway, you can see a little bit of shimmer um, on the radiator, which is just... You know, that that's basically the game not quite being able to keep up as far as the resolution. Um, and you don't really see that too much in this game, but you can see it some places, like, you know, some of the textures on the outer, um, like the foliage and stuff on the trees, like on the outer edge, you can see it sometimes off in the distance, um, on some of the late, far, you know, far stuff, but it's just sort of like a hard edge, on the, or like really technically a soft edge. Okay, look, look at that radiator in front of me. You see how, you'll see when I get closer to him again, look how there's a little bit of like a shimmer on it, and it's not a good shimmer, it's not like a light reflecting shimmer, it's like a... You know, it's like a pixely shimmer. Um, 
So anyway, that, that's one thing. Um, but that's that's what you're going to see a real benefit in 4K is like these small details. But I mean, guys, again, I've, I this is this is the first time I've watched that raw footage like that. There's no commentary, nothing interrupting it, and it looks and sounds absolutely spectacular. Um, one thing that I was not noticing as much was when you're watching it like that, the violence of the racing is really. It's a lot, and I would say it might even be a little bit too much. It might even be a little bit overwhelming because just the screen is just shaking the whole time, but it looks phenomenal. You have to check it out. It's on Digital Foundry. It's called like Forza 7, 9 Minutes of Gameplay, and it's absolutely phenomenal. You get just a raw, unadulterated version of it. So anyway, that's my take on Forza versus Gran Turismo. Thank you guys for checking this out. I appreciate it. Make sure you check back soon. I've really been trying to keep up on all the news and rewatch stuff and, and bring you guys as much information as I can on Forza. So thank you guys. Make sure you subscribe. Check back soon. Really appreciate it. Check out my channel. Thanks.